everyone welcome back to crafting at whimsy wonderland my name is stacy today i have a project for you that's going to be using a dollar tree pizza pan one of these little wooden hello words from the dollar tree you're going to need some burlap some uh, buffalo check ribbon and some assorted flowers this was in my stash not quite sure where it came from but i'm going to reuse these flowers looks like it came out of a pot of some sort and you're going to need some white Waverly chalk paint and some black. So my camera's having a little bit of trouble with the shininess of this pan and keeping focused. So I hope it's going to be okay. So what I'm going to do is paint out the pan with white chalk paint. And it's going to take at least two coats, if not three. And I always like to start by painting the outside edge. I don't know why, I just do. I think it's just an easier way to tackle it. Okay, make sure you get the edge all the way, you know, so you don't have that metal showing when it's hanging up. So I've got one coat done of my chalk paint i'm going to let it dry completely and then i'm going to put a second coat on if it needs a third coat then i will let the second coat dry completely and do a third coat all right so when i come back we will be ready to move on to the distressing step so i've gotten all the uh painting i put two coats on here this one's kind of cut the paint kind of gummed up on me a little bit there i think it wasn't as dry as i thought it was when i went on my second coat but it's going to be covered up, so I'm going to go ahead and work with it. Now, I want to make this look like an enamel, um, like the old-fashioned enamel pans. So I'm just dipping my paintbrush in black, and I've kind of got a brush that's about the same width as the edge of the pizza pan. Dipping it into my paint, and then I'm just holding my brush still and trying to rotate the pan. And that should give me a nice even line all the way around my pan if I turn my pan nicely like I'm not doing right now okay and then because this is like a chippy enamel look I'm going to just Put a couple of little, I'm not doing a lot, I don't want them to be huge, just some little chip marks. Where maybe there would have been some scratches on the pan. Not a lot. Okay. So then I'm going to let this dry and it looks like one coat's going to do it, but I want that to be completely dry before I move on to my next step. All right, now that the pan is completely dried, I'm going to take my matte finish Mod Podge and I'm going to seal it. If you don't seal somehow your uh, chalk paint, it will scratch pretty easily, uh, I found on these pans. so. Two coats of Mod Podge does the trick, or you could take it outside and spray paint it with some clear uh, acrylic spray paint. And oops, that wasn't, whoa, that was not quite dry there. So make sure your stuff is dry or you're gonna get smears like I'm getting right now. First coat, gonna let it dry and I'll put a second coat on and then we'll decorate it. Okay, so I've got everything painted. It's had two coats of Mod Podge on it and it's completely dry. So we're going to go ahead and move on to the next step. I'm going to take this wooden hello word from uh, the Dollar Tree. I'm just going to take off the tags. And this one on the back is really sticky on there. Be careful that you don't break your word while you're taking that hanger tag off because that one is strong did not want to let go all right 
So I've got a piece of burlap ribbon. This I bought in a roll. I bought it at Walmart after Christmas and got it really cheap. But when I was in Walmart a while, um, just about a week or so ago, I saw that they had these rolls still. Uh, they're in the craft department and they were six or seven dollars. Some of them were as much as ten, depending on what size you wanted. I think this size was about seven dollars, if I remember correctly. I, I didn't have the measurements in, written down anywhere, so I was just kind of guessing at what looked right. And you're also going to want some other ribbon, and I'm choosing to use the black and white buffalo check, also purchased at Walmart after Christmas. Okay, so my glue gun has heated up, and my burlap because it came off the roll it wants to curl up so I'm going to flip it over and use the other side and we're going to, to glue this down across the middle and I want it to stay down so I'm going to put a little bit of glue down here on the edge now when you push this down be very careful don't burn your fingers if you've got those finger protectors this is a good time to use them Um, you can get these from the crafter square section at the Dollar Tree. So I'm just going to push that in there. And then I'm going to put a little bit of glue, just a little, because this kind of this one's gonna kind of show. So I don't want a lot. Just a little. Then I'm gonna flip my pan over. And here I'm gonna be heavy-handed with my glue. Okay into that rim and then I'm going to fold this burlap over and push it in to the glue. Okay, Keep pushing it down as the glue cools it might try to let go of it just a little bit but just keep pushing it in. And make sure you've got a good attachment on there. Okay. Then I'm gonna come over here and I should have cut my burlap just a tiny bit longer because there's not a lot to bend over the edge here. Okay, so I'm just gonna kind of tuck these raw edges as best I can. This is okay because this is going to be covered by the flowers. So it's not that big of a deal. Okay. So I've got my uh, burlap attached and now I'm going to cut a length of ribbon and I'm going to go a little bit longer this time and probably too long but that's okay and you can use any ribbon that you want I just want this look okay so I'm going to put glue on the back side of my pan and I'm going to fold this over into the glue. And I'm trying to keep this ribbon centered in the burlap. Okay. And I'm just going to spot glue a few little places across here because underneath this ribbon, the glue won't be seen. So go ahead and glue it down a little, especially over here where I didn't get it to touch the pan very good. But this is where your um, flowers are going to go on this side, so don't worry too much about it. Now that I have this glued down, I can see how much ribbon I need. Trim off my extra, put some glue down. And push that down into the glue so that it sticks. I probably used way more glue than I needed, but with metal, you can never be too sure about hot glue. Um, it doesn't always want to stay. All right. Now, I'm going to be leaving the word hello as um, just as natural wood. You could paint it. Um, you could paint it any color you wanted to, actually and or you, you know black white red would look pretty on this all right so now i have these flowers that just came out of my stash they i they probably came from michael's i don't know 
I'm just going to disassemble this bouquet. I'm going to grab some wire cutters, trim down my flowers because these are all on long stems meant to go into that pot. So I'm just going to clip the back off and I'm going to clip it as close to the bottom of the flower as I possibly can without letting the flower fall apart. And I'm just going to make an arrangement that looks good to me. I don't want to put a bow on this, so I'm going to work it in however it works. Okay. Little berries. I don't know about this green rose. We're going to try it and see. No. I'm not liking the green rose or the green berries, so I'm going to leave those off. All right, so I've got just three little flower bunches, and I think I like how that looks. There's not a lot of variation. Let me see what else I have. Okay, I found a couple of pieces of greenery. Oh yes, that finishes it off. Um, another thing that would work nice here is some eucalyptus or even some um, lamb's ear. But I'm liking this right now, so I think we'll go with that. Okay, so I'm going to start by gluing down my biggest flower right in the center. And then I'm going to glue down the little brown like hydrangeas, I guess they are. Let me get the petals going in the right direction. Hold on. They don't look so flat. Okay, I'm going to put some glue on that and stick them down here. And then some glue on the greenery. Sometimes we can get too carried away with bows and things and sometimes we just need to keep a piece a little bit more simple. All right, there's the flowers, and now I need to put down my word. And I think I like it right there. And I'm going to just put glue all along my word because I want it to stay. And I'm not going to worry about popping it up or anything. I don't think it needs that. And I'm going to just put it down on my pan. I'm going to push it and hold it down so that the glue can seep through all the layers of the ribbon and the burlap. And then I need to decide on a hanger. Do I want a visible hanger or an invisible hanger? If I'm going to go with a visible hanger, I'm thinking it should be white rope. Or I could just do a little loop of jute on the back of the pan and make it invisible. I really like that. It's cute. Okay. I think we're going to go with the invisible hanger. The more I look at that, I think that's just what it needs. So I'm going to grab my jute and I'm going to cut off a stretch and I'm going to fold it in half and tie a loop. trim off the extra. Now I like to take a marker. I hold my um, pan up straight and I figure out where the center is and I put a little mark on the back of my pan so that when I flip it over I don't have to try to guess 
where's the center? Now this is going to be heavier on one side, so I'm hoping that it works the way I'm planning. And I am going to add some E6000 to this because hot glue does not always stay on metal because metal gets cold and it contracts and it warms up and it expands a little bit and hot glue once it's set it's done or if you put hot glue out on your like on your door uh, on a wreath that you make and the sun hits it a lot it's gonna fall apart so I always like to back up my hangers with some E6000 okay E6000 takes a little while to dry so I put the loop down into the E6000 and then I kind of bring a puddle over the top to connect to the other part of the E6000 so that it's good and solid then without letting my glues touch I run some hot glue I lift up a little okay and that hot glue once it cools will hold the hanger in place while the 6000 dries but if the glues mix then um, it just doesn't they just like counteract each other okay so we're gonna let that dry and then I will uh, set it up pretty and let you see what we made all right, there you have it, my Hello Pizza fan. This would make an amazing gift idea for Christmas or for somebody's birthday or even for Mother's Day. And I did a second one as well that I didn't show on camera. And I used the word home and some red flowers on that because my kitchen is red. And I thought this would look really cute in between the kitchen and the dining room. Okay, so same process for this home one. Uh, I just didn't put the chippy marks on it. Okay. So let me know what you're thinking about this project in the comment section below. If you like it, please give it a thumbs up. That helps my channel to grow. And let me know which do you like better, the hello with the chippy marks or the home without. And also, do you like the white flowers or do you like the colored flowers being added in? Um, I do wish I had some wider buffalo check ribbon that would have shown a little bit more. I think that would have added to the farmhouse charm. All right, let me know what you're thinking. This has been Crafting at Whimsy Wonderland. Thanks for stopping by. I'll see you next time.